th thanks for having us here today. We're going to tell you a little bit about the system that we use to, um, to put LifeRay in front of, which is our access system. Um, and a little bit how that's evolved over the years. Um, then a little bit about our project approach as we decided to deploy LifeRay in front of Access. Um, show you our design concept for the redesign and a little bit about lessons learned as we are deploying LifeRay. So Access, and it's spelled incorrectly on purpose. It stands for the Axe, if you're familiar with Stanford and the Cal rivalry. There's an Axe that's in play. So we're named Access, and Access is our consolidated student, HR, and learning portal for the entire university. So all of our community members go into access to do things like advising, teaching, grading, um, look at their pay statements, record their time cards, register for training if one's an employee, and um, do workflow enable processes to approve transactions. It's our primary interface at the university, um, and most people, when they come in, it's their first place that they go. It's the first place that they learn to use at the university. So we have an uh, immense population using Access. We have 3.7 million logins annually, over 60,000 users, about 2,000 advisors, 2,500 faculty, 1,600 staff, 20,000 students and postdocs, and then we also enable the portal for our recent alumni. To give you a look at what it looked like through the years. This is our very first access from 2001. So it was just a couple pictures, not a lot of content. And then moving forward in time to 2004, we have really static blue links. It looks like a PeopleSoft interface, basically. Um, and then moving forward, this is our most recent version before the LifeWay implementation. And to show you here, this is a bolt-on that we put in to allow our students to enroll. Because our community really loves that they're able to go to a single place to do all of the functions that they're used to doing. But our student population especially um, doesn't like the user interface and didn't feel like it was keeping up. So we felt limited in our tool set that we had in place at the time. So we were building bolt-on applications to do basic things like enrollment. One of our students told us when we surveyed them that it looked like we built our portal in 1990, which I was at Stanford in 1990. We didn't have the internet then, so they need a little <laughs> history lesson, but you know, we got the point and we got it very clearly that we needed to put something else in place to keep up with user design standards. So um, centrally, we, uh, as Kelly has said, we run PeopleSoft for student and HR applications, and we have a uh, diverse uh, group of business owners who form a steering committee overseeing that. So part of the service delivery through student for students, faculty, advisors, and staff members, all the business owners sit on that committee. So few of us have uh, formed out a smaller subcommittee and decided that it was time to reinvent the user experience design on access. And uh, key driving factors, uh, most of these uh, you guys are aware and have been covered elsewhere. So rapid uh, introduction of newer browser versions, six to eight weeks, and that's no way that a university could ever scale, uh, even if you wanted to keep up with them. Um, mobile platforms, expectations of uh, students expecting more of administration to be available at their fingertips when they wanted and where they wanted. So we did have some uh, prototype developments earlier with just like the bolt-on that Kelly showed, we built, uh, we helped the students collaborate and build the iStanford application. Uh, we built similar, app, um, similar native and web-based applications that could be much more mobile friendly. But each one of those, our approach was we'll take one, uh, one or two widely used features and try to deliver them this way and then try to get feedback. Because irrespective of the numbers that we threw up earlier, 60,000 users, so many millions of logins, we usually don't get any feedback unless it is bad. So um, one of our strategies was to kind of explore different apps and uh, different uh, technical approaches and see what the uptake would be and uh, then you know, kind of analyze that and form an idea of where we wanted to go. So um, one other thing uh, that was also happening was within the core ERP itself, the application is uh, very broad and deep. So um, the vendor was giving different user experiences as they were transitioning between a 
administrative focused application or a self service user focused application and that made it even more difficult for us to kind of uh, blend everything in to say that you are at stanford and this is what this icon or this label means so <clears throat> So uh, we formed, uh, did, we did a two-year discovery informal. Um, we looked at a lot of portal technologies, portal products, and uh, we were getting feedback from other business owners also saying that not only within student and HR domains and research domains, but we had to expand out to other administrative domains and sort of give a uniform look and feel. So at that time, we felt rather than layer eggs in a uh, strong global vendor-given portal, an open source approach would be much better because um, even though we, are, we have a central IT that runs most of our business applications, as is the case with the university, a lot of schools, a lot of institutions have their own local ITs that are building up websites and catering to the local needs. So, um, and we did anticipate that as we decided to say that we will have one platform that we will try to um, integrate the user experience, we did expect business units to come and say, but I want my people to develop this because they understand my uh, services that I'm delivering much more closely than what central IT or uh, anybody from central business would do. So an open source platform really uh, forms a good um, uh, you know, basis for that, and uh, that was one of the key reasons uh, Lifer emerged as a winner there. Not to mention that they were mentioned by Gartner numerous times, so that made the sell a little bit easier internally. Um, so, with the transition of the portal from, peop uh, from PeopleSoft to LifeRay, we had some core tenets that we wanted to achieve in a multi-phased uh, approach. One was modernizing the look and feel, give a much more cleaner uh, user interface uh, that is consistent across different uh, business areas that uh, um, users might encounter. Um, build a more responsive website that caters to right once, run anywhere kind of a philosophy because we were finding it very difficult to uh, scale up to you know doing a mobile version on the web, something on iOS, now we have Windows, and uh, that just wasn't, we weren't funded for a model like that to support so many platforms. So uh, have a greater compatibility with the later releases of the browser, browsers and in fact, um, some of the help tickets that we would get, they would write to us saying that if the old version of you know, Firefox 2.3 was still available, please let me know where I can download so I can use our application. <laughs> so it was kind of so embarrassing uh, at times. So, and uh, then we also wanted the platform to be able to bring in diverse uh, content from various sources, uh, business websites, policy guides, you know, other research uh, websites, and other administrative applications. So um, our goal was to delight the university community while, so I have to read this out because it's uh, been about a, a year or so since we came up with this goal to harness the entire team around. Um, to establish an infrastructure at part of phase one to give a best of class service delivery uh, compatible with multiple application sources. Primarily, in, put it short, we wanted to give something that the students and the faculty members and researchers didn't feel that it was in their way. They had to do something, they had to go somewhere else because they didn't come to primarily use our applications as much as do really innovative work at Stanford. So um, as I said, the project approach, we had, uh, we had a fixed timeline for phase one where uh, we wanted to get our uh, experience internally with uh, installing and deploying LifeRay. Um, we engaged an implementation partner to help us with the uh, user experience development. Um, they did the user uh, they did the user research and they gave us uh, certain wireframes and an approach for phase one and with how to evolve over into phase two. Um, and uh, some of those core things that we had put in uh, the phase one was commonly requested items from users. Um, like a cleaner look and feel, some greater uh, control over how the portal presented the information, and a much more easier navigation for them with the key items um, up front and others embedded further uh, down below. So phase two, we wanted to take on the phase one, what we had delivered, which uh, in fact, proud to say that we went live in August, and we are right now working out the, uh, our phase two plans based on the wireframes and the visual design we have 
um, how to break up larger uh, functionality constructs into smaller portlets. Um, and I think with uh, 6.2, we are also, today we, um, we were actually talking about exploring an upgrade of 6.2 and then seeing the additional uh, portlet features that uh, LifeRay has uh, delivered. So this is to give you a little bit of a flavor of what our redesign is. And so, you know, obviously not radical, but we did have a login page for access that was full of words. And <laughs> what we heard from our users is no more words. We, we understand what a portal is. So this is a, a cleaner look for us. And we think this is one of the things that's been pretty widely accepted with um, the change. It shows just right from the get-go that we've gone with a cleaner look and feel. and will present less content to you, but more meaningful content. So this is something I think that's been successful in our first phase. Um, we went really light with preferences in the first phase, and that was the result of some usability testing and then some surveying we did of our users. We were surprised to learn our users didn't want as many personalization features. Maybe when they're going out and doing personal business, shopping, et cetera, they're interested in personalization. With us, they were really expecting that we put something meaningful in front of them as soon as they log in without them having to take some extra steps. So this is our one personalization that we have in place for people to set their homepage that they see when they go into the portal. Because we do have a lot of people who are both a student and an employee, a faculty member and an employee, et cetera. So this allows them to set their starting point when they go into the system. And then lastly here, not radical, but radical for our population of mega menu concepts. So people could dump, uh, jump in to navigation steep from wherever they are in the portal. This has been a little bit of a training challenge with, for some of our you know, internet users who are very set on static links. We're have, finding people are having a hard time hovering over the menu and getting where they need to go. But I think once they get there, they've been satisfied. But this has been kind of a little bit of work in progress and not something that we are sure will carry forward to the next phase. So our focus is for phase two um, for our entire population, including the faculty, lots of interest in um, mobile responsive UI. So their focus will be there and in figuring out how we can get our phase one portal to be completely mobile responsive at the end of phase two and not be bumpy along the way as we're moving different elements along the way. Um, we'll do a little bit more with user-centric functionality, which I'll show you in a minute, and expand some user preferences, but again, not very much. And lastly, um, a smart search. We got a lot of feedback that search wasn't working for people. Search was either very specific to where they were at that point in time, or too broad, searching all the Stanford web pages. So this will search content that's deployed in the LifeRay portal, in addition to what's in the underlying application, which is PeopleSoft. And this is just a quick peek at our design, our phase two concept, which consolidates everything that a person would want to know on their home page. So tells them their action items that are coming up. Depending on the type of person, it would show a snapshot of their enrollment, the classes coming up for the week, upcoming calendar items, grading that might be due, et cetera. So we foresee in the future, come June, we hope that people will be able to navigate everywhere that they need to go from this home page, and personalization will no longer be um, necessary at all. We did learn a couple things. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go over that? First. Okay. So um, firstly, we were, and um, uh, the major differences that we learned between uh, going through a closed source portal to an open source was the uh, tool set with the closed source vendor, it is good. You have a strong community that the vendor supports. But incidentally, over the past three years, Oracle also announced they would be moving a lot of PeopleSoft applications into what their Fusion uh, application stack is. So that kind of led to a big churn of the good PeopleSoft developers who are now planning to expand their skills. So we were running into a problem of getting decent developers there anyway. So we felt. Uh, going with an uh, open source, our development pool would be much larger to dip into to get the uh, resources. So um, browser support is something we had uh, talked about. And uh, um, one of the things that PeopleSoft UI is primarily, you know, uh, I don't want to get into too many technical details, but the, the presentation layer is interspersed with a lot of application logic. 
So they don't do a strict MBC architecture in the application. So um, this, we're going with LifeRay now, and uh, now having run that portal for about 10 years, we now know what are some good things to have at the UI layer and what are some things which are better off uh, back at the server side. So during uh, uh, LifeRay implementation, we did encounter some uh, limitations on the YUI and the Allow UI uh, frameworks as to what widgets our uh, UX designers were willing to uh, use um, and wanted to use. So for some of those widgets, we had to build them again. And uh, one of the limitations we see with LifeRay is, I believe the application is limited to about 500 roles. And, uh, we didn't have that sort of a limitation in PeopleSoft, so over 10 years we had over 370 already. And many are defunct, some are redundant, but it's a much larger uh, collaborative effort to go back and clean up security because you don't want somebody calling and saying, I can't do this anymore. I used to do it yesterday. So, um, and surprise, surprise, we, even though it's open source, a lot of J2E portal resources could be used on LifeRay, we didn't we were unable to find good resources that were also aware of LifeRay's uh, development best practices. So generally, if we go with the requirement, people would directly jump in, all right, I'll look at it as a Java application, I'll build it, and you can run it in the portal. And we had to tell them, no, 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 not like that. We have to look at the you know, structure and the artifacts that LifeRay has given and try to see how we can utilize what's delivered to uh, build what we want. So, and uh, last but not the least, campus readiness at you know, university is always challenging. And, uh, are there a lot of higher ed folks who are here? Yes? Okay. So we did pretty classic usability testing. We identified stakeholders, tested five to ten um, employee, or employee students, et cetera, in each group. Um, what, what we found, and this is not unusual, is one faculty member is not like the next one and one faculty member's opinion does not necessarily stand in for the rest of his colleagues. So if we were to do it all over again, I think we would usability test more heavily with our students who really do have the eye to the future to cutting edge technology and focus more on readiness campaigns to our staff and our faculty, um, kind of convincing them that we are taking them in the right direction rather than indicating that we are taking them in the direction of their choosing. So it would just reverse the flow a little bit, um, which is a, a challenge with our population. I can't say if we were to do it that way, we would have a happier group of people, but I, I think it's probably the best approach given that we have such a range of people using our systems. Right. All right, now questions. So we are open for any questions? Um, implement, implemented or um, uh, tried out with students or in prototypes or whatever? We usability tested against our phase two designs. Um, so our students did see that and they, they loved it. They thought it was fantastic. We put the same things in front of our faculty and our staff and they felt it was a little bit too busy. They were more comfortable with going where they wanted to go first and then deciding what to do next. So we're not sure how it'll play out with our entire population, but the students loved it. So the, the question is, where did the action items come from? Oops, sorry. Um, so our underlying application is PeopleSoft. So the action items will come from various tasks that are assigned to the student in PeopleSoft and calendars that we have in the system. So if we have a calendar, an academic calendar, for example, in the system that has our enrollment deadline, our drop deadline, et cetera, it will um, consolidate those action items to a single bullet and then allow them to drill in. But it all needs to be built from our PeopleSoft code into LifeRay. So this is not coming from their particular courses, uh, learning it, it will come from their particular courses, so it could show them their exam schedule, for instance, not necessarily in the action items because it's not an action item, it's a notification to them. But the area underneath, if we're able to go back, Sorry. No. The area underneath will list schedules and calendars for them as well. Do you have the ability, since it sounds like you've got 
your faculty and your students wanting two different sites, do you have the ability to present different sites? Because I saw you had that personalization. What is that providing in terms of if I pick which version? It, it, are you giving them a different experience? For now, they're receiving the same experience. That's giving them only the page on which they start. So our, our system is role specific. So once you launch into the system, you have to choose if you're acting a, with your faculty hat today, as your employee hat, your advising hat, et cetera. So it allows them to, to state where they'd like to start but the experience is the same once they get there. Um, we like that this does offer us the opportunity to present different user experiences to different populations if the need were to arise. But we think our students can pave the way for a best in class experience for the rest of our populations. You mentioned some struggles with um, YUI and Alloy. Did you guys end up using that as a continually or did you guys end up using a different framework? Um, it's been a mixture. Yeah, what is uh, delivered has been used, and uh, for anything over and above that, we are uh, trying to uh, use either jQuery or some other tools. Hi, um, can you explain about the integration that you have with the PeopleSoft? Is it end-to-end -end integration, or sorry, point-to-point -point integration, or is it through message broker, something like Tipco? Um, it is point to point. PeopleSoft actually comes, they have a pretty robust infrastructure, so they come with uh, messaging middleware called Integration Broker. So we, over the years, we have built up a lot of experience in building the mobile apps, iStanford, uh, and other point bolt on apps, uh, and delivering functionality through that. So we have gone with the same approach. Hi there. It looks as though your IS department is actually driving the implementation of LifeRay. What is the relationship that you have with marketing communications, with the, the campus communications team that is, is talking about all the really cool things going on in, on the university campus? And do the students get to go to the same place, or do they have to go someplace different? We have not taken a very integrated approach with our overall campus communications. Um, we tend to communicate application specific at our university. So as we have a major rollout, we gather resources around us to do a niche specific communication effort for that rollout. And, and that's definitely an opportunity for improvement for us. Um, with this rollout, we chose to um, get an external resource to help us do a little um, communication strategy that was a little more fun and geared toward the students. And I think it was successful in that arena. Again, um, not as well accepted with our faculty population. Um, but the idea here, and it's the one that we always go with in this application, is if I need to communicate quite a bit um, to tell you how to go in and take a look at your pay statement or enroll in courses, I've really failed in how I've developed the user interface for the application. Sorry about the wait. Um, it seems like the HR and payroll and, and really are, are, the, are the, the teams that are really driving this. And, it, and if it, my impression is that it's kind of pushing uh, people soft out in a sort of more user-friendly way. But to what extent is the Stanford portal really a kind of comprehensive um, experience for people? So whether it's looking up their classes or how much they owe the university or um, you know what's happening on campus what a particular events might be going on how far is it how far is the portal penetrated down into um, you know student organizations having their own sites or their own groups um, even actual learning or research that's being conducted or shared online through the portal because um, it's an issue I think it's not just um, uh, prominent among in, in, in academia, but for, for me in, in the private sector, um, the, there's this tension between trying to push the portal on people and, and having them pull it from you too, you know, the demand side of it. So can you just talk a little bit about that and, and where you feel you are in your evolution as, as a, a single, a one-stop shop really for, for everybody who wants to 
uh, interact with others in the, in the university community. So as Access evolved from being maybe a mainframe system that went online in 1993, I think, which was specifically for students, I think we made excellent, excellent headway in making it a one-stop shop until we get to maybe about 2008 when we just really couldn't keep up with user experience standards. So we had consolidated everything in. We had great strength in being a one-stop shop for anything that anyone needed to do related to their employment or enrollment at the university. But then we just couldn't do much more, which is where we started building the niche mobile applications, which took us, I think we, when we went live with Life Ray, had started to move away from that one-stop shop because people were visiting Access to then launch out to another application that they preferred. And we're hoping this moves us in the other direction so much that we pull in other types of content, like you said, campus notices, um, maybe some reporting, et cetera, that makes it even more meaningful and makes it absolutely the one-stop. But we're still a ways from that. Do you have anything I like to add? Just a couple more points. I think the goal is not to present a Stanford University portal. Um, focus was more on administration and functions that touch most of the user populations. Stanford really, and like many of the universities, they have very strong communities within uh, the various divisions and schools that run their own web front ending and uh, messaging. So we were able to build, pull in some, and uh, send the users over to their respective uh, sites, that itself is a big win. So our goal was more to get all the administration much more predictable and uh, you know, seamless to the users. Thank you so much for sharing a case study with us. I have a question related to the migration from PeopleSoft to LifeRay. So right now, the PeopleSoft application is completely shut down, or is it still integrated with LifeRay? Uh, PeopleSoft still runs our business completely. LifeRay is, um, I'd say it's more of a skin on the, all the services that users use. But PeopleSoft actually is the brain behind everything that happens for the users, it helps us define who the users are, uh, define what roles they should get, and then to those roles we map uh, you know, what contents needs to be uh, presented in LifeRay. So without PeopleSoft, I, uh, you know, that's the enterprise platform that runs all the business. Right. Oh, one more. Oh, sure. Uh, what are your next steps on the UI? Are there things that you're, or user experience in general, are there things that you're aware of that aren't there yet? And what are you planning to do next? Mm -hmm. So, um, we took a three year roadmap. Uh, when we embarked on the project. So we do have uh, you know, some action items delivered from a user experience uh, consulting study that we have to build. So as we build those and we collect the feedback from the users, we are open to adjusting the path as it is. But given what LifeRay is today, I think we, should, we are in a fairly good position to meet what we want to within the next uh, two to three years. So again, one more question. Okay, so the question was how users interact with uh, PeopleSoft, do they interact with PeopleSoft's user interface or LifeRay's interface? It's, a, it's actually a hybrid approach right now. So we have, as in one of the slides we mentioned, we have a lot of self-service functionality that we, um, uh, that we expect eventually users will only interact with LifeRay. And there is a lot of administrative functionality that people will go into PeopleSoft and then uh, interact with that. So we have PeopleSoft being presented within a frame right now within LifeRay, and we have to see going forward if that is what our users will continue to live with or if they want to change that. So, all, yeah. so I can, uh, I'm still around, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.